What is up, everyone? It's time for February's Emmy Emmy recap. I was going to do this in the middle of the month, but Wonder Festival happened, so you got two of those videos instead. I am working on other content that isn't just recap videos, but I can't use my room right now, so reviews are on hold. But we'll get them when we get there. <laughs> I'm not sure how much there is this month outside of that one day where there was like 20 figures. Uh, I'm hoping not a lot more than that, <laughs> but it's best if we just get right into it. First off, I need to talk about the Gyoza Fairy. I think he is an exclusive to the Good Smile online store or something. He's an absolute little fella. I was hoping he'd be cheap. The asking price is 5,500 yen, which for something so plain is just a really big feels bad. But he is really cute and endearing, so I don't really know how to feel about him. Anyway, let's head on over to Ami Ami. This isn't new, but Patrice is getting re-released, and she's a really cute Nendo. I already have her, and I would recommend her. But my first figure that I've never seen before is this. Her, uh, <clears throat> her clothes are a bit ripped. <laughs> What's up with that? It just seems kind of plain, especially with the very vibrant like red i'm surely that's pink but this red base which kind of looks like an idol but then you've got like this demonic battle wings stuff going on i'm assuming she fights in some sort of way so it she doesn't have a weapon though admittedly the details are pretty cool but i feel like it's just missing something to make it to give it that oomph that it really needs I can't remember if I've talked about this Rin before. I like how comfy this whole thing is. <laughs> Even though it looks kind of plain and basic, there's some nice layering and everything with all of her clothes. I like this little tray of extras that she comes with. The detailing seems pretty good. There's not nothing that's really standing out to me is like, oh, don't buy this. So, okay, I would probably recommend that. This chun -Li looks terrifying. Ugh. <laughs> Yeah, no. I <laughs> also feel like I've seen this Megamin before, but probably not. There's just too many Megamins. I really like the pose and the rainbow stuff. The thing is, with the base being blue, it's kind of just... It's too much. It distracts from the rainbow stuff that's going on. Like, alright, so they even have a promo image where they completely hide the base. And that looks nice. That's cool. Maybe you could just paint the base black. Maybe you've made your own, like cloud base out of like cotton balls or something <laughs> that'd be cool <laughs> okay we're here this is it this is the big day i have to go through all of these if i accidentally miss one i'm sorry let's start off with this girl she's got like three of the same thing they have one version without the boat stuff and they have one version with the boat stuff for 30 bucks you probably may as well just get the extra parts but let's take a look at her it's just so elegant. I love the hair. The transparent tips and this gorgeous gradient that goes up to the, the solid white at the top is so nice. She's very pretty. There's so much going on, like especially with all the detailing on these little tassel things she's got. Is she holding a sword as well? God damn, she's cool. Oh, that's so pretty. She's on a dinner plate. The issue with this is that she's like super lolly and I'm not okay with it dress is so short like what is this hello it's just it's just kind of gross for me it ruins what is a very very nice looking figure <laughs> there's another Agiline figure this time by Ulta it's too far in the opposite direction of the other one it's just really not my style I think this is like very borderline for like how far Ulta will go with figures you got Yu-Gi-Oh here looking pretty much exactly like Arthur Pendragon from Fate I'm sure he has a figure that looks exactly like this. This might be the first E-Stream slash Alpha Satellite slash, I, I don't know if it's under the Shibuya Scramble brand, figure that isn't excessively elaborate. There's not a whole lot to it. I'm sure some people will like it, but that price is way too much for what this is. This guy from Jujutsu Kaisen is probably the cheapest E-Stream figure I've seen that has effect pieces. It's not like the effects on this one are like crazy, but it does prove that they can make a figure with the effects without jacking up the price. Sure, this guy's outfit is like very one note, which maybe helps on the price side. 
It is quite a lot more interesting than the Yu-Gi-Oh one, in my opinion, and it's only like $10 more. I'm going to save my favorite Eastroom figure from this batch till last. So this is Demon Rem Crystal Dress version. You've probably seen the normal Rem Crystal Dress version, which is like a nice, very happy blue one. Personally, I'm not really a fan of Demon Rem, so her whole face and everything just doesn't sit well with me. I think this figure is visually overloading because there's just so much of that like pink, purpley, red. And then in the middle you just have Ram with her, with her black and white dress and her blue hair that kind of clash, I guess. It's obvious that like a lot of effort has gone into the whole sculpt and everything. I just, I just don't like the final result. And that's, that's just how it is. Now this Rimuru figure is sick. It's so, so cool. It's also so, so expensive. I, that is so photoshopped, it's not funny. <laughs> I think the figure looks better without the all the photoshop stuff on it. It's cut off on the screen, but this is called the ultimate version, and I would have to agree. I don't see there ever being a better figure of Rimuru coming out. I think one blemish it has is that it does have this kind of gross little metal pole to prop his leg up. I've looked at this figure for a a long time and I didn't really notice it at all. It, it sort of just blends in so I'm hesitant to recommend it just because it's so expensive but I really really like this figure. Ooh. All right let's look at the one with the base. Wow. Wahoo. She looks super super boring on this base by herself with the deluxe base. I think that really brings the figure together. The outfit has like nice gloss finish and matte finish depending on the texture where it makes sense. It's a pretty cool character design. 22k is a bit pricey, but that's a pretty cool looking figure. I think if you're going to get this, absolutely spend the extra money for the base. It's about 60-70 I think, but I think it makes the figure. Why is Q's Q like the only company that makes Scath figures? Something about this is really off-putting, and I don't know what it is. She's kind of cute. If you, if you do like her, probably disregard what I say. She, she looks fine enough. <laughs> I like the back because of her hair. It's really nice and flowy, but you, you don't really see it from the front, do you? How much is she? It's expensive. Why are all figures expensive now? I assume I've already seen the Rem China dress that matches with this, and I don't remember it at all because it's, cause it's sort of overdone at this point. Oh man, this looks so ugly. Oh, wow. Rem's face looks really off. Oh, there's there's the Rem. I remember her. She looks like a circus lady. I think these both look terrible. Is this the second racing Ilya, or did I miss one and this would be the third? This is actually really cool. That's a really interesting way to do a racing flag. Too often they're too quick to just be like, here's a, here's a checkered flag, or here's just a very bland looking flag with the logo on it. But for this one, they've gone the extra mile. I think it's a really nice concept. I think it's finally a fresh take on a racing figure. And if more of them look like this and have this sort of effort put into them, I'll be more okay with seeing racing figures pop up now and then. I would try to pronounce this name, but I have no idea how to say Chinese names, so I'll save myself the embarrassment. I think Mythos does two things that really make them stand out from the rest. One of these really cool bases, which this one absolutely nails, and Two is the faces, and I think that's where this one falls down a bit. With this one, just because of the character design, you can't really see it. But as always, it's super nicely detailed, extremely extravagant. Like, look at that, it's on the back. No one will ever see that, but there it is. And like, these gorgeous patterns on her dress. Despite the face, I still think this figure is a complete steal at this price. Why the hell are they doing a race queen... Nekopara figures. Oh, what the heck? What? Why is the dress come off? Mm. It's really cheap, though. <laughs> Ooh, what is this? That is cool. She looks like a space queen. Whoa. That's such a cool base. Oh, even her dress has, like, stardust sparklies on it. I really, really like the concept of this, even though I, I'm not fully sure what the concept even is. I get that it's Vocaloid, so she has to be, like, singing with a stupid big microphone, but I would prefer it if she had, like, a... Just imagine if she had a giant, like, Space Queen staff instead of a microphone. Oh, it'd be so cool. And surprisingly, this one is also pretty cheap. I want it. I want it so much. 
<laughs> Furu, go away. Furu, stop making boring figures. Could have just been a prize figure, man. It's, it's just clean, very safe, very uninteresting, I think. And it uh, goes with the witch girl with the boots. I feel like every single figure of this girl looks the exact same. Why do they make this so the hat can come off? But then they have stupid hat-grabbing hands, still. There's no point, no one is ever going to want to take it off. The colours in this one seem a lot less grating than before. This might be the best one, surprisingly. I wouldn't expect it to come from Furuyu, but I have not been impressed with a lot of these scalps. I really think Furuyu should have stuck with prize figures. I feel like they're not adding enough detail to these to really make them worth the extra money. I guess if you're like really into armpits, maybe, maybe you armpit fellas want to buy this one. <laughs> Ugh. Now that one's just wrong. Mushoku Tensei is really blown up. There's so many figures. How is Union trying to charge 160 bucks for this? You could tell me this is a prize figure and I believe you. Legit. Have we done it? I think I've done it. That's the end of the very big day and it's probably taken half or more of the episode. <laughs> I guess also on that day I'll just touch on the uh, Kumoko Nendoroid. Some some people don't like this, I think. I think it's kind of cute. I can imagine posing all the little dangly legs will be very fun. For something that's like very off-brand for Nendoroids, she's not expensive at all. She's kind of in line with the price of a normal Nendoroid these days. Happy about that. I wish they did a more cute Nezuko. She's got like her angry hands out, but her face doesn't say angry too much. I feel like they just wanted a mix of both worlds of like happy and angry Nezuko, but it's not that great. There are so many good Azulene figures. This one is so classy. While you get the leg from the front, I, I appreciate the back more, just because it's got this really nice like half dress skirt flowy floofy ruffly thing. I don't... is there a name for this? I, I don't have any idea about fashion. I think it's rare to see a prop like this being used as the base. They've absolutely nailed the vibe they're going for. I feel like other companies would charge you like an extra $50 to $100 just for those. I have no idea who Wings Inc. is. I'm assuming that's a different company to Wing, but I'm not entirely sure. And for basically the same price, you can get this very, very boring looking ReZero figure. It's just, it just looks like solid black and solid white and solid yellow. They keep putting out all these different maids in a show where the two original maids are already like the most popular thing and, and both of them have more figures where they're not in the maid outfit than they are in the maid outfit. Ooh. ReZero throws me for a loop. I touched on this figure a bit in my Wonder Festival recap video. And finally we get to see some close-ups of Shiro, which is really good after like at least a year of not seeing really much of anything. <laughs> I really love the detailing they've they've done to show, but I can't help but feel the base is lacking. I just wish there was more swords. Just make it more epic. It's missing like the one thing which would push it over the edge to be like absolute recommend to everyone. Whereas right now it's like I feel like you gotta like Shiro and you have to wanna want a Shiro figure. This girl's frontline M4 Salt mod figure is kinda crazy scary and also crazy expensive. I don't know if she's necessarily worth that price. She doesn't seem that intricately detailed that it really justifies it. You know, maybe including the gun and this like crazy robot hand, maybe push the price up. Since her hair is basically just like a blob up here, I can see this top red one being very weird. If it is just a flat sculpt there and they've just painted on this red line, not too sure. Here's the first Mega House figure of the show and you wouldn't believe it, I actually like it. I think it's really cute. I really like the sculpt of this wolf dude. It kind of fits Mega House's style a bit better since they, they usually do some of these more cartoony, like sort of Pokemon looking things. I think they did a Beastars one as well. The worrying thing is there's no scale on the listing and the size they've said makes it sound like it's very, very small, which is something that happens with Mega House figures. But I think it is really cute. Great sculpt and good job Mega House. I don't hate you fonts. I think this girl has been the banner on Ami Ami for a while. Mythos are coming in clutch with this very, very affordable price for 1-7 scale. She seems really nicely detailed. There's nothing crazy going on and the price reflects that quite well. You can really just appreciate all of these really tiny details they've added in. It's, it's kind of incredible. Probably the best 
economical option for a figure I've seen in a very long time. I thought this was a Carter Day from Angel Beats, but it's not. She seems very classic fantasy princess. Just kind of expensive for Kotobukiya. Usually their stuff runs a bit cheaper. This is some 15th anniversary of some series that probably hasn't gotten any love ever. I'm sure one person's happy about this at least. Why is she kneeling like that? Her arms are in a weird position and they look like twigs. I'm really not impressed by the prototypes I've seen from Union Creative tonight. F feels like the only thing they put effort into was the shoes. What the hell are these Demon Slayer things? They look demonic. For some reason the Levi re-release didn't go up with Mikasa and Eren last time. Uh, but here he is. He looks good. Very good. Wow, this is such a Kotobukiya looking figure. It seems like they put a whole ton of effort into making that hair look as vivid and dynamic as possible. Which is so strange because the rest of it is just not like that at all. It's, just, it's too well done compared to the rest of the figure that it just looks kind of off. I'm very surprised that it's only 180 bucks with this base. I thought the base was going to increase the price by a hell of a lot just because of how much I like the look of it and how much detail it, it seems like they need to put into this. I don't know if I particularly enjoy the way the colors go together with the base and her, but I think it's definitely a cool figure. I, I'll pretty much always simp for anything that has a nice, cool looking base. So I will simp for this. Wow, that's cute. Well, it looks cute, but it also looks terrible. Where do I even begin? Her hat looks like it's falling off. The way she's walking looks like she's gonna fall over. Like, it doesn't look natural at all. But everything between her legs and her hat looks really, really cute. I, I definitely prefer the one of this girl where she's riding the broom. That one didn't weird me out with the pose immediately. <laughs> Chibi Cthulhu-chan. I saw people going on about this. That is cute. It's also pretty cheap. It's a very nice little diorama. And she comes with different faceplates. <laughs> Ooh, and it lights up. I'm surprised it's so cheap. And for only like under 100 bucks. It's really not bad. Especially for something like unique and cool and funny like this. Want to talk about Kurumi? Let's talk about Kurumi. I like this outfit a lot. I, I guess it's kind of very standard idol outfit, but all the different patches and everything make this look a lot more fun and interesting. I don't completely hate this one. I feel like there is a justified spot in the market for it. Better than I expected. It's just a, another Kurumi for the landfill of Kurumis at this point. Oh, who's this? Cat-eared sister apprentice? Yes, please. I love the hair so much. It goes very vibrant blue at the tips. It's just... Mm. I also love the really vibrant blue ribbon here. It goes from like that really dark navy to this really nice bright blue. Very impressive looking. The rest of the figure itself like actually does have really nice visible shading. Oh, it's by Ulta. I didn't even realize. Of course it's good. But here I am going off being like, whoa, who is this manufacturer? How is, how is this so nice looking? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's Ulta. They care about the details. This is probably the cheapest figure I've seen from Ulta in a long time. What the hell is this? They really just stuck a JPEG behind her and they're like, yep, that's the base. I don't like that at all. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't really work. The floor is also hideous. They reach for the stars with this base, and they miserably failed. Should be so much better with just a standard base. This is a figure that I am 90% going to be pre-ordering. I will always simp 13 Sentinels, and I'm very happy with how this figure turned out. It's the first one that doesn't look really terrible. While I'm a bit sad that it's 1-8 scale, I will deal with it. I want more of these. I really hope Kodo continues this line. So there's a lot of characters, there's like 15 or something they could do. And uh, while I am a Xenoblade simp, I will not be buying Melia. I don't like the colors, and I don't like the base. It just doesn't do it for me. I'll definitely be saving for Nia when she comes out, but I can't imagine she goes up for pre-order anytime this year anyway. I just don't see myself spending this amount of money on Melia. Maybe if there was a matching Shulk or something, I could get behind it. Or if they did the entire party with like Riki. That'll never happen. They only ever do the girls in these figures, so. Okay, we're coming up on the end. I keep thinking they've already released 9S, but I'm just thinking of 2B every single time. He yeah, does come with quite a lot of stuff. I do think he looks pretty good. Is this the first time I've seen this year's Racing Miku? I don't mind this design. 
I do have one of these racing Mikus. You have to put like all the decals on the car yourself, and I couldn't be bothered to do it, so I just never displayed her with the car. I feel like the whole point people buy these for is for the car, and I've just completely wasted it, so... Oh well. I'm gonna wrap this up with two Kona Super figures. These are the Chinese dress version Yunyun and Megumin. I like this figure quite a lot. I just don't think it looks like Megumin. Without her eye patch, without her hat, without her like explosions, how much of this is Megumin anymore? And once you get rid of all of those, she's just some cute anime girl. I quite like how they've gone the extra mile to have a base that fits the dress, and they've also included the steamed buns. Or is it a dumpling? I don't know. What What's the difference? They... <laughs> I don't know what the word is. I wouldn't buy it because it's Mega Man. I would buy it because it just looks nice. Union, on the other hand, is like off doing her own thing, and she's, she's looking kind of dumb while she does it, which is great. I love the comedy in this whole thing, where she's like about to drop everything. I love that you can see the second layer of stuff in here. It just... It really makes this figure feel more alive and real that they have paid attention to the details like that. Her dress as well, like, there's this really cool pattern on it, and I love the gradient. I always like gradients. <laughs> I think they make a nice pair, even though the colors and everything don't match up at all, really. It's a, it's a fun pair. The more time I spend looking at these figures, the more I do like them, especially the Mega Man. Ooh, all right. I think that's going to do me for this month of Ami Ami Recap. I hope you've enjoyed all these figures we've looked at. There has been a lot of good snuff this month. I'm, I'm saying that more and more now. I think we're trending up in the industry. Things are looking much nicer. Let me know down in the comments if you've pre-ordered any of these figures. And if you did like the video, remember to like it. And if you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. <laughs> this has been the Endo Experience, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!